All righty, and I'd like to, to welcome next Marcus Zarate. And he has provided a video that I will share. Let me get this going. Hello, everyone. My name is Marcos Zarate, PhD in computer science. I work at the Center for the Study of Marine Systems, Sasimar Conicet, in Argentina. Before uh, I start starting, I would like to thank the Chadwe organizers for giving me this opportunity, and I, I appreciate the effort made to make this conference possible. Today, I'm going to talk about the development of a web application called Link Open Biodiversity Data, LabD, a semantic application for integrating biodiversity information. Okay, let's start. Um, what motivates us to develop a semantic application to integrate biodiversity information? Uh, well, the reality is that many scientists frequently collect biological and environmental information over years and store it in database systems to answer their own research question without exposing it in repositories that make it easy to find and retrieve. Um, this is not only happens in biodiversity, it's also happened in many other scientific areas. While in recent years, the community working on biodiversity informatic has made significant strides by creating common shared vocabularies such as the Darwin Core and publishing mechanisms such as the Integrating Publishing Toolkit. Integration uh, is largely limited to the aggregation of datasets and full interoperability has still not been achieved. Um, we know that the interoperability and uh, links among other uh, data sources uh, would allow integration of information that is, is in other ways disconnected. Um, this allows scientists to answer broader questions. Okay, well, according to the problems previously mentioned, how can we help solve the interoperability problem that exists today? One way is to use the paradigm proposed by the Semantic Web and Link Data. Um, the Semantic Web and Link Data aims to represent information in a way that in addition to human-centered display purposes, it can be used aut autonomously by machines for integration and reuse across applications. Previous considerations provide motivations for developing a web application considering semantic interoperability that provides answer to the following questions. It is possible to complement taxonomic, bibliographic and environmental information of a particular species without relying on specific APIs. Um, how to relate the occurrence of a species with environmental variables within a specific region? What are the bibliographic references associated with a given species? With these questions such as this in mind, we present the design of a proof of concept application, Link Open Biodiversity Data LabD. Um, LabD use link data uh, to complement the species occurrence information previously extracted from GBIF and converted to RDF, Resource Description Framework, with information about the taxa in question from different uh, RDF datasets such as Wikidata, NCBI Taxonomy, Springer Nature SciGraph, and Open Citation Corpus. This is the simplified view of the LabD client server architecture. The client perform a query here and the request through a web browser. Depending on the request, the server consults the different Sparkle endpoint here and return the result through the client side user interface. 
This is a very simple architecture that is used in many projects that make use of link open data. LabD application consists of three models. Um, general information where the Wikidata endpoint is uh, used to retrieve additional information about the selected species, um, including links to other uh, databases and information about the species extracted from NCBI taxonomy. Bibliography, where all the publications related to the species are retrieved and extracted from open citations. And finally, environment, um, where users can plot the species on a map and add layers related to marine regions as well as environmental layers, example, temperature, salinity, etc. Um, for the development of the application, we use the Shiny framework for R and, and the access to a Sparkle endpoint is done through the Sparkle package. Um, marine regions are obtained from marineregions.org uh, and the environmental layers are extracted from BioOracle. In this screen, uh, we can select a species extracted from Bigionto endpoint. Uh, in this case, Nironga leonina or southern elephant seal, and see how the information is retrieved from Wikidata here uh, with information on the distribution map common name, state of conservation, etc. Um, also, identifiers to other databases uh, are retrieved from Wikidata. Here, um, we can see uh, how by following the links, uh, we can go to the description of uh, a species in GBIF, for example. In this screen, we see how, following the idea of the previous slide, we have generated links to open citation corpus and retrieved bibliographic citations related to the same species. Um, if we follow the link to the selected uh, DOI, this is the publication. In this screen, we can see a very interesting application of how the LabD handles uh, heterogeneous information. On the one hand, we have the biological data of the distribution of the species, these points, um, and we retrieve the geometries of different marine regions from marineregions.org. Uh, which uh, describe each region in RDF. Uh, in this case, the economic exclusive region of Argentina, here. Um, and we can see a link to the region of the marine regions page. The last example of the application that we develop is the most interesting we can see how, in addition to previous data, we add em environmental information such as bathymetry, sea temperature, and salinity in this part of the film, um, which are fundamental for any oceanographic analysis. The environmental layers come from the project called BioOracle, which expose its metadata as RDF. Finally, to conclude, we can say that while LabD is a proof of concept, the general concept of linked data proposes a powerful tool for scientists as it allows generating new approaches um, to biodiversity informatics. Further, 
users would benefit from complementing the current prevalent use of vocabularies that are not ontologically defined, such as Darwin Core, for sharing biodiversity data. The authors of this work are Marcos Zarate, who speaks, Paula Cermoglio, John Bysorek, Anabella Plos, and Renato Massanti. Thank you very much for your time. I hope I didn't bore you. Bye. All right, thank you so much, Marcus, for that. that was fantastic. I believe already we have some questions for you. Um, let me see. There is one question in the chat from Guido. It's like, what do you gain by converting data from Darwin Core to RDF? Can you hear me? Yes. Yes. Um, in a previous work, uh, we developed a um, tool to convert Darwin Core Archive to RDF um, using uh, the mapping generated by OpenRefine. Um, this is the way that we create RDF uh, from Darwin Core Archive. Excellent. Do we have any other question for Marcos? Yes, there are a few in the document. Um, Mark asks, what development stacks, platforms, libraries are used? Sorry, can you repeat me, please? Yes, um, the first question is from Mark, and he has a few. Um, is what development stacks, platforms, libraries are used? I can also put it in the chat if that would help. Um. The library to retrieve information from Sparkle input is a library that Sparkle uh, from R. And let me see the question. Yes, uh, and the, well, the front end of the application is done using the Shiny framework. Um, basically, to map, we use uh, Leaflet, and the main library used to retrieve information is, uh, as I uh, said before, uh, a Sparkle library for R. Great, thanks. I'm just going to keep pasting them into the chat, but I'll also read them out. Um, also from Mark, did you also semantically uplift some sources as not all of them are published as linked data? Now, for example, um, not all the sources are published as linked data. Uh, for example, uh, BioOracle only publish metadata as linked as, as RDF. Um, uh, I, I don't know if I respond to your question. Mark, you should also be able to unmute yourself if you want to. Hello. Uh, yeah, the, the question is about, for instance, marine regions. Uh, it's, it's not published as linked data. So did you create RDF out of the REST API or did you use some other mechanism to, to produce the, the, the RDF you need for the rest of your application? 
we we use the um, the REST API that provide um, marine regions, and after that we convert to RDF and store in a um, to resource that we use to plot the information in, on the map. Thank you. Uh, my next question is, how did the performance scale up? And I do understand if that was not the goal of the research since it was, also, was only a, a proof of concept, but if you, well, can share anything about the performance of the application or the perceived performance. To be honest with you, we don't test the performance of application. Uh, probably if we scale uh, up the application, we need um, many modifications to the idea of the app. I understand perfectly. Uh, no problem. And my last question is, did you also use and investigate using Shackle or other constraint languages to safeguard the application or to check the quality or whatever? Today, no. Um, we only use OWL to develop the ontology um, behind this, but uh, we don't uh, realize tests about the shell. Okay, thank you. You're welcome. All right, our next question is from Salvador Fernandez. It's, are the layers from marine regions and bio oracle being pulled from their APIs or R packages, or are they downloaded previously and read locally? No, uh, it was received uh, using the package uh, for R called bio oracle. Okay. And then VJ Barve would like to know, is this tool open source and under active development? Can you repeat me? Is this tool open source and under active development? It's under active development and is open source, of course. Excellent. All right, and I believe uh, thus far the final question from Abby Benson. Do the data need to be in Darwin Core for this to work or can, or can the data be uh, in its more heterogeneous format for this for it to work? No, the uh, Darwin Core only. Darwin Core only. Okay, excellent. All right, we do have time for maybe one or two more quick questions if there are any others in the audience. All right, well, I think we're, we're good. Thank you so very much, Marcos. Your video is fantastic. Your presentation was, was really interesting. And thank you for, for uh, answering all these questions for everybody. You're welcome. Thank you very much.